Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Kat. And we're the, the Ghouls Next Door. Talk about that spooky stuff. Spooky stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's normal. Yes, exactly so. normal. So we are continuing our classic horror, like, writer time. Yeah. You mentioned a writer today. We're going to talk about Dean Koontz. Yeah. So we started with, with King, right? Because that's how you start off a campaign about writing about horror. Yeah. And then we had Shirley Jackson. KJK. She... <laughs> yes. And now we're back to Koontz. Uh, to K here. Yep. Um, Koontz uh, doesn't have as strong a following as people who love King. Because he's oftentimes like compared to King. Mm -hmm. But like, n which is incorrect. It should not be happening. Yeah, I mean, it's just because they're both, like, old and they exist at the same time. Yeah. If they existed at different times, they would exist, like, in the same, like, variety of fandom, I think. In that, like, they're both very talented. Yes. They just happen to live at the same time. Yeah. If they didn't live at the same time, they'd still be both famous. Yeah, and they're, but they're just completely different. They're yeah. just things about them there. It, it doesn't make any sense. But um, I will say my favorite thing about Dean Koontz is that he, on the back of every one of his books, is just mm -hmm. a picture of him and his dog. Yes, he loves his dog. <laughs> he loves his dog so his dog. hard. And it's really cute. Like, even on his website, he's like, I love my dogs. I live in a house with my wife, my dogs. And, like, he lists the dogs that are no longer with him. No. So, like, one of them's name is Trixie. I don't remember what the other dog's name was. <laughs> but it is, like, Trixie in spirit. Aww. And his current doggy's name, I definitely put it. He's super cute about his dogs. <laughs> Elsa. Uh, ha. Nice. Frozen. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, another fun fact about Dean Koontz, and this is, like, just honestly, just me <clears throat> being selfish uh, and using this platform is just to, to say hi to Vicky's dad, my Facebook friend, Tim, because he loves Dean Koontz. So my friend so Vicky. This is for him. We dedicate yeah. this to you. <laughs> we dedicate this episode to you. He's read like every single. Does he listen to Dean us? Koontz? I don't know. I guess well, this, is the, this is the time, Tim. We'll get a nice Facebook message from Tim if he listens to us. If he doesn't, then we'll know. Yes. This is a test. Tell us if we if we do your favorite some justice. If you want to leave us a comment about why you love Dean Koontz, we will share it with but people. But also this is a test to see if you listen, Tim. Yeah. And, and how are you still alive? What? Timmy's died. Oh. <laughs> He's an adult man named Tim. Yeah. He made we need it. to bring him he on. He made it to the gauntlet. We need to ask. All right. Vicky, you hear this. Yeah, this you listen. This is dedicated to my Facebook friend, Tim, uh, <laughs> who is a good <laughs> fan of ours in spirit and has made it past his Timmy age to be a full-grown Tim. He has made it to that evolution. Yeah, we must know why. <laughs> and so we're going to talk why about Dean Koontz. So we'll talk about his life. We'll talk about his style. We'll talk about some films that are, you know, honestly pretty, pretty on par with what Dean Koontz is. So I feel like it's pretty good. Yeah. I like Dean Koontz. He's a good guy. Yeah. It's going to call him Dean from now on. Okay. As we do. My uncle's name is Dean. So that's what so I think of So you're related to Dean. Not this one. Just the one Dean. And Dean. he doesn't write comic or write Dean, horror movie Dean. books. I'm in a weird what, mood, guys. Hello. Same. All right. Stay tuned. live all right <laughs> let me tell you we've been live this whole time i've been alive here for 26 years what? world but how yeah, long has dean coons been alive don't ask me questions i don't know i have stuff <laughs> about his life that i found how interesting. many dean coons are there that's I'm there's no such question. number there's just one okay um, so Dean Coots writes like I imagine my grandpa would write if he chose to be a writer. So this like my, so you. Yeah, like my grandpa wrote in like journals for no one else to read. And he really cool stories that are super cute. But he just like wrote even just like descript like Dean Coons now, Dean. Yes. Dean wrote 
really just like cute. Like I was just like, oh, <laughs> you're good at this. Like, you, be, you know you're good at this. Like Aww. shut up, Dean. <laughs> but yeah, it was cute. Like I loved reading his like little descriptions of like why he wrote things the way that he did. And like on his website, like his website is very elaborate. He has yes. an entire section that is just him answering questions yeah. people have submitted really to him. Really detailed. Yeah, really detailed answers to these questions. Yeah. I'm like, you took time, yeah. man. That's adorable. <laughs> I just find Dean Koontz adorable now. I had no idea this whole time in my whole life. I have seen like the name and I've seen his books. Yeah. You know, I've seen them. We have one right here in front of And my grandpa definitely owned a lot of his books. I remember seeing the titles. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but I didn't know he was so adorable. He's an adorable old man. Yeah. I don't even know if he's that old, but he's just like this ador like I imagine him as an old person and he yeah. is an adorable old man. Like my grandpa once was. <laughs> so yeah. I love Dean. Dean's great. <laughs> So, yeah, we definitely found that we really when you look at someone's like life and then you really dive into their history, it's like, oh, you're a person. I like oh, yeah. you. Cool. I forgot you were <laughs> human because you're famous times. And it's like, no, nah, you're totally human. Everyone's human. We're all human. Yeah. We all poop the same. There's books. Wow. About it, I okay. Guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, didn't know where Isn't that go what there? like grandmas say where it's like <laughs> your pee smells the same as everyone else's? That's not true. Pee smells different. I know. I wanted to, to say the other thing, but that? we can't curse. <laughs> Okay, I got you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but one is very different. Because <laughs> one could be a sign that you're not eating well. And the other, and, and it could also be a sign I'm you had asparagus. Saying, you're picking up one pin down. Now I am. <laughs> it took fine. me a minute to get there. But yeah, so another wonderful thing about Dean. Um, <laughs> okay. Him and his wife's story is super beautiful. And mm -hmm. they're like, she's been ride or die from the beginning. Like, they got together when they were young. Like, I, I, was, I think, like, fresh out of high school, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and he went to college at Shippensburg University and, you know came out and like started teaching it was just really having a hard time because as everyone knows the public school system is like difficult yeah it's just a hard time like it's it's hard to like feel you're having a rewarding situation and he like struggled with that like in the like one behaviors are challenging of kids yeah. like kids are difficult and he chose to teach high school <laughs> like 90 percent chance that that's an accurate fact if i remember correctly um and then, like, that's a difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. And his wife basically told him at the age of 21, he was 21, not her, I don't know how old she was, <laughs> was like, I'll support you for five years financially. Dang. If you don't make it in that time, like, she knew how much he loved writing. He's like, if you don't make it in that time, then, you know, you can't do it. We're not going to do it. And five years is a lot of that's time. That's a long time. Like, I don't know if she did research before, but it's like, that is a while. That and you also, have to sometimes financially people take support. a long time to make it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we're so, talking like, if like he was schools, 21. Like, if I'm like, hey, Gabe, I'll support you for five years. And if the ghouls don't make it in that time, we stop doing it. We're already in two. So. Yeah. So, like, we're yeah, doing pretty good. It would we're, start from now. I know, we're picking. No, 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 no. This has been supporting me for this whole no. day. <laughs> okay, so three years. Okay. Call it even. All right. But, like, I'm also invested. So, Isaiah. <laughs> yes. And Michael. Yes. Start support funding us. our dreams, man. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she was, like, ride or die. She was, like, I'm going to support your life. If you can make it, dope. Yeah. Like, Dope. let's yes. do this. I'm in this. Like, yeah. we're going to be together. I'm going to support you. Yes. Um, and so she did that. And by, like, she did not need the whole five years. Mm -hmm. She got to quit her job because he's doing real well, doing all famousy and selling books and, like, yeah. doing it. Having um, dogs, being cute. And they're still together. Yeah. With their puppies. And we're not any babies. It's got puppies. This seems great. like a trend for male writers. And I, it, when I say trend, I mean just we've, this is the second we've one that we've two. covered. <laughs> yeah. But yes. versus Shirley Jackson, who did not have that fortune. Well, there are these, this is dispelling some of the myths of like the artist who can't commit, the, the yeah. dangerous artist, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. who living off a of ramen yeah. like you know <laughs> yes. doesn't like is loose with whoever they decide to be with yeah. because their life is unstable no yeah. one can tie me down creative yes. i don't know i'm also creative and so like my boyfriend's a writer and i'm not like hey let me support you for five years i can't 
I'm sorry. Well, Mike. it's just because we, we work in nonprofits. Yeah. Like, everyone get realistic <laughs> yeah. expectations. I don't know what his wife does. Yeah. But maybe that's she true. had like maybe a real like good job. Or something. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, so she's like supportive. It's adorable. They have dogs. There's <laughs> Trixie once. Um, and everyone was like really invested in his dogs because he puts them in all of his books. Yes. And he like writes about dogs within his stories. So it's just like really adorable. Yeah, the watchers. Mm-hmm. So a little bit more about Dean is that like it makes sense that horror when you're writing about it, suspense and horror and like stressful things yeah. Um, that you've experienced those things in your life. And I'm not going to get into a lot of details because it's like really str- like, I don't want to like put them all out there. Like yeah. but he's lived. Dean has lived. Yeah. Um, And you know, a lot of it happened when he was a kid um, specifically involving his father who struggled with alcoholism uh, and just like anger, it seemed, or like some variety potentially of mental illness. But I don't know all the details, obviously, because I'm not D. Yeah. Guys, did you know? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like his father struggled with alcoholism and like being really disruptive in the home. And the, the mom really tried to hide it from him. But, you know, kids are very perceptive and they see way more than you think they see. Yeah. World. And honestly, for trauma, the more trauma that happens early on, the more damage it does. They always think like, oh, they don't remember. <laughs> this doesn't mean subconsciously they don't got problems. Um, yes. But yeah, brain is plastic. We all heal. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so he experienced a lot, you know, and his dad and him still to this day do not get along. Yeah. Um, because of that stress. like, And, you know, he honestly, I would say horrific things happen in your life transfer well into writing yeah and that like there has to be themes subconsciously of like that coming up in some capacity or like just the fact that like he's writing about horrific or suspenseful like psychologically suspenseful situations like suspense is this big genre um and he's amazing at it that like Living with an alcoholic parent, your whole life is suspense. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what you're going to come home to. Mm-hmm. You're always wondering and ready. Like, it's so I see a little bit <laughs> yes. of how that transfers into yeah. his books. It seems to be a trend that these are there. I think it's kind of motivational. Like, take your trauma, put it into a cool horror story. People are going to buy it. You become wealthy. You're not traumatized anymore. Well, you're, you know, you're recovered from trauma. I'm not saying that M. Night Shyamalan's split. Yeah. Is that what it's called? I don't know what you're, you need the to get The movie with the personality guy. Yes. Is it, it called split. split? Yes. Okay. So I always get the title wrong. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should kidnap people. <laughs> no. Who haven't Catherine. been traumatized <laughs> because they are weak. But. That did happen in that That movie. did happen in that movie. And the girl with the most problems, a.k.a. trauma, yeah. is the one who survived because she was stronger and more resilient. Okay. All I'm saying or is. Or just maybe write some books. Yeah. I'm just saying, though. It's like it makes you do cool stuff. <laughs> yes i've experienced trauma much trauma i'm funny as anything yeah. i'm doing cool horror stuff yeah. i write and draw stuff what's up world oh my i'm gosh. broken but good is this why we like horror so much i'm enough <laughs> oh my gosh what's this that stitch says uh stitch not bad stitch fluffy <laughs> no <laughs> that's also fun but it was like <laughs> the like the family is like broken yeah my but family still is good. broken but still good yeah yeah yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. That, but for writers. Yes. Dean. Yeah. Okay, Gabe, your turn. You got anything else about Dean? That was my whole spiel. All right. You didn't want to tell about this magic puppy? Oh, you right. <laughs> <laughs> you read my words. <laughs> okay. So there's this adorable anecdote that I want everyone in the world to know about. Yes. So the first, so like Steven. Mm hmm. When he was writing books and like little stories when he was a kid. Yeah. He had his first sale. <laughs> it was from a family member. Aww. So he wrote his first story called The Magic Puppy. Aww. And I'll read kind of like somewhat like about like, what he, but he was eight years old and it was 11 pages long. Oh my gosh. Just like on regular notebook paper. Yeah. And he duct taped it. Or whatever he like, may have stapled it together to make a seam, and like put uh, the things, the electrical tape, 
uh-huh. on the for buying. Theme. So this is coming from his website. This is a story that he said that he happened for real. So okay. I've decided it's true. Yes. Um. So the story uh, was about a puppy from another planet, Aww. and basically was and because he was obsessed with time travel. Yeah. Uh, and he drew like the illustration and like decorated it. And then sold it to his uncle Ray for two nickels. Two nickels. Oh my gosh. And he calls his made in genre science fiction because it was about a alien puppy who was just like doing stuff. <laughs> as it is, as it should be. Yeah. Aw, thanks, Uncle Ray, for creating Dean Koontz. Like contributing to who he is. Yeah. So the puppy was obsessed with time travel. I fixed it. Okay. <laughs> The puppy was obsessed with time travel? So the exact quote, I was just trying not to exactly quote the website, yes. but well, I'm just going to do it um, because I gave credit <laughs> yes. to his website. Um, the puppy was from another planet, a twist Tolstoy would never have considered in part because he was psychologically obsessed with time travel tales. No, that's about Tolstoy. Okay. <laughs> so the puppy wasn't obsessed with time travel, but the puppy was adorable because he loves dogs. Yes. He loves golden retrievers. He I does. I don't know if the puppy was a golden retriever, but he loves them. <laughs> and it was from another planet, so it's about an adorable little alien baby. Yeah. And they're friends. That's awesome. And he got two nickels for his first story. So not doing as well as <laughs> That's Steven, more than I've got ever gotten. a whole dollar. <laughs> Again. But two nickels, man. <laughs> two different types of life. Two different types of people. Yeah. I, so um, I have been a fan of Dean Coots for a long time before I knew that I was a fan of King. Cause remember I just mm -hmm. found that out recently, recently you're like, <laughs> that Whoa. I'm a fan of King. I had Dude, read King a lot of King. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah. I had read a lot and then was just like, I'm doing this because I need to, not because I love it. And then mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, I do actually like this. Yeah. Um, but Coons, I did really love, like I read him when I was, style. yes, I read him when I was really young. I remember I read fandoms when I was in middle school, which is, you said was gigantic. So I don't understand. No, I think it was, uh, I looked it up. It was only 350. Like <laughs> it was a decent book. Um, but I read it when I was in middle school, which, um, is it's not a middle school book. It's really scary. It's 300 pages and scary. Yes. Um, I remember at the time I, my first job was working at a flea market, okay. uh, selling boiled peanuts with this like old man. Is that why you love boiled peanuts so much? <laughs> I'm also from the South. So it's a part of that too. Okay. But yeah. It, and I remember telling him and him being like, what you're reading that? Like, are you kidding? Like this old man was like, why? And I was just like, it's so, it was so scary. So I read Phantoms and it was terrifying. Like it kept me up at night and I was like, I have to finish this. Yeah. So Dean is like a pro at suspense. Like uh -huh. it, it makes for a really quick reading because you like can't put it down. Like you're like, I have to know what's happening next. See, I would have read that then. Because yes. I could only, when I was a kid, I could only read books that were very suspenseful or yes. like science fiction slash like anything because yeah. i was like this is messed up i must know more <laughs> but like otherwise could not keep my focus well lucky for you phantoms is here in our podcast layer so you can read it i anytime. can read it if i want <laughs> yes it so it's so great and and he doesn't write in a way that's like super challenging either like he's not a pompous writer he's yeah. like i'm gonna put enough fluff in here to make it interesting and that's it like i don't need to overdo it yeah which is awesome and makes it very easy and, uh, and digestible, right? Yeah. Um, but he's he's really, really good at, at suspense, like weaving these stories where you really want to know what happens and you're very invested in the characters. Like these are people that you would believe exist and uh -huh. they're generally good people. Like even when there's like a villain who like is questionable, you still kind of like want to see if they're okay you want to yeah. see like what happened to them um and you yeah you just finish these like so quickly um and so uh i think there's there's a lot of things that are are, are different between him and king that i feel like it's really unfair to compare them right yeah. um specifically though like he's really good at these suspenseful things where you're you're rushing through them um but kind of like what I was thinking of like in It Chapter 2 when they have that running joke that he can't write an ending. Uh -huh. Well, that's like a little bit of Dean Koontz because <laughs> he and I, I think it was actually like King and Koontz have like jokes with each other, too. Yeah, and, aren't like, they friends? I think they're acquaintances. OK. Yeah. But there's been times where like Koontz has appeared in a King film. Yeah. Like and, it, and it's been a joke. Like they wrote characters about each other. Like it's just they understand 
like the world and how yeah. they're like kind of lumped in together. But I, it's funny because like Koons will write these really amazing and just like propelling like narratives. And then you get to the end and it's absolutely ridiculous. And you're just yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> so like I rode the whole train. <laughs> for this and like it was absolutely just what? out of left field so like uh for example in phantoms right so we're taken on a 300 plus page ride in sheer terror at this befuddling mystery right so it's it's literally where this entire town has just vanished and we follow like two sisters and some cops or whatever who are trying to figure out what happened and what you find is uh that the reason for this disappearance and numerous other like historical mysterious disappearances of like it like entire populations such as Roanoke, which is like a very popular mysterious time, mm-hmm. right? Um, that the reason for that is an ancient blob. Yes, yes. an ancient. I blob. watched it. <laughs> Yes. And it, but when you're reading it, it was so crazy to get to that point because it was just like you were there's like singing coming from the sink. It's very reminiscent of it in that way where there yeah. was like a lot of like sewer things happening. Yeah. But and then there's like bloated bodies and it would change form and it would get you and it would do all this stuff and all of this other things. Um, And then you get to the end and it was like this like archaic blob monster. That was doing it. And it was like, really? You just ruined the book. Listen, it's been out for a very long time. That's probably what those comments say. I can't see them, but... You can look on Facebook. How is that Uh, how it works? Yeah. Um, But... I'm gonna do it. So another one is uh, Strangers, which actually... Um, is one of my favorite Dean Koons. And it really affected me when I was younger. Um, One, because... So it's a bunch of strangers who, um, like, all... Like, they're totally strange. They have no connection to one another. They're living their lives. And they end up, like, experiencing random phobias that they never had. And, like, mm-hmm. really intense. Like, they're just absolutely terrified of things. Like, yeah. for no reason. And it's, like, out of the blue. So they're like, what is this? And so it really spoke to me because I had trypophobia and didn't know what oh, trypophobia yeah. was. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, my gosh. Am I like these people who, like, I'm afraid of the sidewalk because the crack is really weird. <laughs> and so, oh, my gosh, is whatever the ending of this book going to be what happened to me? <laughs> like, I was, it like, is. reading That's it for answer. answers. And then it turned out, um, spoilers for anyone who is going to read this old book, uh, it was aliens. Yeah. Aliens caused this. Of course they did. <laughs> what do you mean? Yes. Uh, but in like a good way. So like, so something I, I was thinking about when I was thinking about the comparisons of Kuntz and King, right? Mm-hmm. Is that King has always said that he writes his nightmares, right? Like he writes things that scare him and he writes really like, like traumatizing, affecting things mm-hmm. that like really stick with you because they're brutal. Like he doesn't pull any punches and he tells some really graphic awful yeah. things right well mm-hmm. Koontz doesn't do that like Koontz talks about the supernatural and he'll talk about things that are scary but he does it in a way that's fun mm-hmm. like it's almost like uh like the sci-fi channel version of horror <laughs> you know yes. like where it's it's fun and goofy and there's this weird masked monster that's coming after you but like it's really more about the people and their like experiences and their adventures yeah. um because <laughs> it's just like yeah I think he wears like you know, King kind of believes that people have some like evil, like some people have some evil in you and that eventually mm-hmm. you're going to succumb to the madness. And I think Koontz just believes in people. Like he believes that we're going to be so okay. Optimistic. Right. Isn't that sweet? He's just like the, see, I told you he's adorable. He's an adorable grandpa <laughs> man. Yes. Um, one, one example that I have of kind of really showing the difference between these two mm-hmm. is that they've both covered themes in where, in which, like someone has had their world like completely ripped from under them and their tr- truth is just shook. Like their <laughs> whole life is just shook now. Um, so I talked before at the beginning of this series about um, Stanley and Stephen King's It mm-hmm. and how when he was kind of, when the truth was ripped up from under him and he his world was rocked, yeah. it led to his suicide, right? Yeah. Like, cause he could not fathom this world coexisting with the world that he's in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in, a similar case, right, uh, with Koontz in Strangers, we have these people who 
because of the aliens, what had happened was they, they had seen these aliens and it totally rocked their world. And that's why they had these like phobias because it, it was yeah. s- like subconsciously reminding them of the experience. But so when you they, thought you had seen aliens. Yes, I thought okay. I saw aliens and I thought it was finally time yeah. uh, for me to go home. But <laughs> instead, because <laughs> you've been one the whole time. <laughs> um, instead, of what happened is that the they go back, they re- all these different strangers meet back up and they go back to where the aliens are and they rediscover them. And it isn't scary. Mm -hmm. It was like euphoric. It was like, oh my gosh, we have discovered this thing. Like, oh my gosh, we got the chance to like experience this entire world shaking life. Everything in my life has led up to this moment. Yeah. And it's just like this beautiful, like more uplifting and transformative. Whereas like King was like sharp and destructive. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how you have to look at, the two right like one is just a paranormal like fun romp and the other one's just like there's rape and murder and children <laughs> which is like yeah. yeah um i can see why they're different i see i'm thinking of you know the things you're saying and putting them down <laughs> yes so that's kind of like what i was seeing as as being the the big difference but i definitely suggest Kuntz as an easy read and it's just really fun Right. Like you don't have to think too deep yeah. into it. You can have a good time and you can get a lot out of it. Um, like these stories have stuck with me. And I, I read them when I was in middle school and yeah. I still remember them. Like and that's saying a lot because I generally just forget like immediately <laughs> when, after I've read a book. The effect of uh, horror, I yes. think, is mainly yeah. the goal. Yeah. So I yeah, I'd say everyone stop comparing the two because it's not real um and that if you want a really good just like a nice dad time (laughs) like a dad (laughs) story (laughs) which is why number one the best the best dad awesome awesome, whatever uh number one dad which makes sense why vicky's dad tim loves it this is dad horror the best dad awesome (laughs) yes today Tim, your coolest number one dad, the best awesome, as is Dean Koontz. Does Dean Koontz have children? No, he has puppies. He has, he's a he's dog a dad. dad. He's a dog he's dad. He's a pupper dad. <laughs> he's a pupper dad. Yeah. Yeah, We're on films. They say Roland. This is this is for Roland because he was like, I never really knew what you guys were saying, and that it it meant like you were in the facts section or film section. <laughs> it's like I thought you guys were just saying stuff, and then I just listened, and it was like, oh, facts, of course, films. Oh my gosh, feelings. It was wonderful. Yeah. I was like, we work so hard. <laughs> Well, because our old interludes were us just... Yeah, I did tell him about our, like, spooky, 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 Or just the sounds of us watching things. Um, So that's for you, Roland. This is just an episode where we talk to our fans. So I hope it's not super annoying for everyone else. Meet our friends. Say things to us, and then we'll say stuff about you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I talk about... Remember that one time from the Netherlands? Yeah. (laughs) Was her name Joy? It wasn't... Joyce. Was it Joyce? I think it was Joyce. We're going to look it up. And then also we've shouted out for Great Britain and Portugal. I'm loving it. We Tell we me your names Friday. and I will be friends with you. We'll tell our moms. It'll be great. Yeah. But. Also we watched some films. We watched some stuff about Dean. So we watched Phantoms. We did. I was there. I... Don't you say the things. Don't you say it. <laughs> so, don't you embarrass me on public. Uh, no, you don't embarrass your own self by saying those things. So right, we watched Phantoms, Phantoms uh, because it was a book I read. And so I was like, oh, I can, you know, apply my book knowledge to this film. And then I had seen the film at some point, but it was not memorable. And there's reason for that because it's not good. Yeah. Um, here's what it's about. So Phantoms is from 1998 and is directed by Joe Chappelle. 150 dead and 350 missing in this tiny mountain town of Snowfield, Colorado. And that's only the beginning. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it's that's about a town it. that dis- people disappeared. Some people are dead and bloated. There's a, there's sisters who are investigating. It has young, I think Rose McGowan, I think is her name. Uh-huh. Um, and then, like, one of the charm sisters. Affleck. And baby Ben Affleck, who is mm-hmm. apparently... 
one of Kat's favorites. No, he's not my favorite anymore. He do you was guys favorite wanna hear... to me when I was in middle school. And do you want to know why? Do you no, guys want to hear I the never... film <laughs> that Kat said when I was like, Ben Affleck, you like Ben Affleck? Why? And she said, yeah, I love him in Daredevil. I loved him <laughs> in Daredevil. No one when I was in ever middle said that school. In when their I lives. was in middle school and I didn't know what acting was. <laughs> Very clearly. Or a good writing. <laughs> I don't care. I liked the movie. I liked that his blindness gave him strength. It's fine. It was the start of Benefer, so Exactly. Important. The ended in gambling and divorce. It's fine. <laughs> classic, classic tale of love. Yep. Um, that's not what this is. This is not. A We're classic talking tale about of phantoms. Love. Yes, Gabe. So trying to embarrass me. As I said a bunch of times when we were watching this film, the book is far better than this movie. This movie is yeah. trash. Um, I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed watching. It, it was super boring. The thing is, like, you can't really like. His I can't judge. Oh my is... god, do I have bad taste <laughs> in films? You well, I could have told you that when you said that you liked. Well, you know what? We're with the whole thing we do. <laughs> I have good opinions sometimes. Okay. Well, here's the deal. The the I I'm biased, right? Because I'm gonna be one of those people that's like the book is better than the movie. Generally, my my I ain't seen the books. <laughs> you haven't seen the books. You're right. Um. <laughs> I usually usually my point of view is to um like approach a movie even if it's like there was a book of it and I've read the book and I'm just like oh this is a movie that is just similar to the book I read but it's totally yes. different it's a different, different entity time. uh even when you do that it's still bad <laughs> like it's and fun. and I feel like you really miss out on the joy of but the phantoms. but the moth guys yes that was a good part and eat the brain he did look like and eat the brain. That's he true. went all through his eyes with his tongue. He went look like, and then the brains were gone. Yes. So there's a. So there's the thing so about that was fun. This blood That's monster fun in Phantom is that it it does take weird forms. It mimics people. Um, and at one point, it's like a weird moth bird creature that like eats a guy's face. He eats his brain. He eats his brain. And it was clean um, out of his eyes. Leave Schreiber, I believe. Yeah. Um, who was like a creep in this, in this? Yeah. I think Philly is always kind of a creep. In the film season? Just like in any kind of film. Yeah. Like Leaves always like a, a creep. So he was in this, but like more so than usual. Yeah. And it's like, the thing is like you really miss like the suspense that comes from it. Because it. Oh, it, like, like when, because it had to rush it. Yeah. yeah. And like when you're reading it, it's like so much scary to have to like turn the page when you're like hearing children's voices singing from like the sink. Yeah. Or like when the bodies go missing or when you have those, ex those really uncomfortable experiences with Lee Schreiber's character towards the young girl. And mm. then like you get more like relationship building because yeah. they're, they're in it longer. Like you it care feels more longer. about what's happening because you have more yeah. of the setup. And you get more of the background because like the whole time that like they're investigating at some point it like that splits. And then we're also investigating like the history of stuff. And so we're kind of like there's this this kooky doctor guy who has been investigating essentially the blob yeah. and what he thought was the the ancient enemy yeah. that has caused all these disappearances in uh -huh. the history of life. Which it has. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> Which he was right. But it's like so much more interesting when they're like tracking him and down and they're like doing the research and you get to dive into like the history. Whereas in this film, it was very rushed. I don't recommend it. Because it's just, it doesn't hold up. And if you, like, you have to be a real diehard fan of Coons to like this yeah, one. Yeah, that's fair. But we watched another thing. We did. We watched Demon Seed from 2018. Nope. It's the wrong date. <laughs> Demon Seed that was made. Yes. Director Donner Donald. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. <laughs> I said it. I can't say any names ever. Um, so a scientist creates Proteus, an organic supercomputer with artificial intelligence, which becomes obsessed with human beings and in particular, the creator's wife. This yeah. movie inspired so much. Yeah. So like any, like there's a Simpsons episode based on it. It's definitely the inspiration for Smart House that was on <laughs> Disney Channel. Um, yeah. It was like, it's a culture piece. Like yeah. everyone has like not realized that they've seen this film or read this book in essentially some way, yeah. in some way like because yeah. it's influenced so many other things it is like ripple affected out because i vividly remember smart home 
Yeah. I thought I didn't realize that wasn't like I should have known because it was like a kids movie. Yeah. Like, kids movies. They're always working was, that hard. I do on think those. that Smart House might be also like influenced by this, but also probably a lot of Ray Bradbury. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is because of um the rains one about the house that keeps going after everyone's dead. But this one is is more dedicated to like a smart house. So it's essentially this computer that becomes smart and then it wants to it's actually kind of like it, it's refreshing cuz it it's um cuz they want to use it for bad. They want to start mining in the ocean. And uh-huh. the robots like, "No." Because now you're going to cause pollution and you're going to destroy the earth. And he's like, I just want to feel. Yeah, I, I want to be, I wanna be a person. Yeah, I want to know what, because that's the one thing it can't like study really. Yeah. So it wants to do that. And then um, there's like the guy who created him who's like cold um, towards his wife and she finally gets a divorce. And she's a very feelings heavy person. She's a psychologist. Yeah. And she's like all about emotions and talking through things. So of course the robot's like, yeah, I want that. Yeah. And so he traps her in the house like any love story is and then <laughs> forces her to have his baby because romance. Yeah, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah, It was scary. It was really scary. And honestly, like, so see, I vividly remember the Simpsons episode that was based on it. And the same thing happens where the house falls in love with Marge, like Homer's mm. wife, um, and tries to, like, kill everyone else in the house mm. to have her. Yeah. Um, and it's just like similar in that way it was one of the halloween episodes that they yes did, tree house like, of horror tree house of horror yeah we should watch so it. when i was watching this i was like oh my gosh this is about that yeah this is from the thing i watched that it was like my favorite simpsons episode <laughs> other than the one where bar has an evil twin that lives in the attic like that was like one of my favorite ones i vividly just remember binge it tree house of horror yeah and i just I had no idea what yeah i didn't really watch a lot of simpsons so what? i don't think i've ever seen a did tree you house have of cable horror. How did you I don't know if I did Simpsons? actually. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of TV. But, oh, okay, okay, uh, that makes sense. But I'm just saying, but I have it seen was based Smart off House. Of that. Yeah, and I, I, you know, when you ever have you ever so you had cable because that's Disney. Then yeah, I guess I. You know, whenever you like you watch or listen to a song and then you remember an emotion or a situation. Yes, 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 yes. So when I watched Smart House, I vividly remember the time that I got incredibly ill because I drank like an entire giant peach flavored Sonic shake and then ate a whole pack of pepperoni. Yep. And then I was incredibly ill. <laughs> so it's not a food game. That's not a meal. So now whenever I see or hear about Smart House, I immediately remember being really sick and just eat. I can't. Till like two days ago, I have never eaten a peach. And I accidentally ate a peach the other day and was like, oh my God, these taste good. <laughs> I like couldn't. So just there's a lot of triggering things about this movie. So it's yeah. the, the Smart House reminded me of being sick. And also incredible trypophobia warning oh well yeah uh-huh because yep. there's it, it's like i was watching i was like what in the cronenberg world is happening right now it's it's flesh technology it's a hundred percent cronenberg i don't know what came first chicken or the egg in this situation but either one of them has to be influenced by someone or has to have been like yeah like i want i want <laughs> someone to be like good to job each other. on on making flesh and technology all together and it's so gross and it's just like so this robot house wants to make a human baby that's also as smart as a computer. Yeah. So I think like the idea. So spoiler Z. Uh, at it's the very end, old. Yeah. So at the <laughs> end, the robot baby says like, "I'm alive." Like he's Proteus, or like yeah. she's Proteus. Yes. Yeah. And it's um he the Proteus replicated. They had um the protagonist. Um, woman and the husband who created the AI had a daughter who had died from like cancer or something. Yeah. And so like they had experience loss. So he just replicated this kid. So it looks just like her. Yeah. Um, but it's not. And there's like also it was like a question because they didn't wait the five days. So what's wrong with this baby? It has to be something. Um, but yeah. So he traps her in the house and she did really well with like fighting back. Yeah. No, she was really smart about it. And, she like uh... went on strike. She, like, was straight up just going to die. She was like, I will just die. I will kill myself. And it took, like, other, like, him threatening other lives for her to be, like, fine. Like, she literally was like, no, you ain't getting this baby. I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know what kind of crazy world is going to happen after this. So I'm just going to straight up die. And he also, was like, no. Also, who's just volunteering to just have a kid? That's a painful process. <laughs> yeah. You're not and just it was, like, it was oh, fast. Way, my, it's, like, it's, it's going to be real quick. 
Yeah. Real quick, not hurt. Giving birth still hurts. That is a giant <laughs> child. Yeah. Absolutely not. Robot parts. Yeah. Is metal coming out of you? No. Well, I don't Absolutely even know. It not. was a cra- it was really interesting to see how like <laughs> Because she was like, how does this even happen? And it's not really described or explained. It's just like, it will. Okay. It's going to happen. And like people die, people try to save. And then she like eventually is like lethargic to it. She's like, all right, I'm going to have this baby. She fell in love with the baby because it was inside of her. Because that's her kid. She didn't like it afterwards. Yeah. But when it was in there, she was all lethargic because then the husband came and was like, what happened to you? And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. We're going to have a baby. Yeah. And he was like, uh, what? <laughs> and it, I want to say it took like months before he was like, oh, wait, my wife is <laughs> trapped in the house. It took someone being like, didn't you automate your house? That didn't was crazy, you wasn't it? Months? No, no, they didn't even mention his wife. They were like, didn't you have a house that had a robot in it? And he was like, oh, that's where the robot is. And yeah. then he went over there and it was like. Three months later, after she had her expedited pregnancy and gave birth, it's like too little, too late, sir. Yeah. yeah. And then they like, you know, they brought it out. It was it was a ride. I was not expecting that as far as like my experience with Dean Kuhn's books. I don't think I'd read it because I've seen too much and I don't want to be reminded of what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And I feel like it would almost be worse to hear it described. Yeah. Like written wise yeah. like i Ooh. wouldn't want to know one how that baby is made no nope. two what the birth was like three what it looked like four the whole thing <laughs> it just i just yeah i wouldn't want to read like it wasn't a bad boo- i was genuinely scared i was, was like there was, was like scary. eight times where my mouth was just hanging open in shock mm-hmm. where i was like what yeah the entire time. But it was like a fun time. It was scary. Mm-hmm. I was surprised it was as scary as it was. And then like the robot was like how it was and the effects were how they were for the time period. Yeah. Because it was like an older film. Yeah. I was a little surprised. I was like, wow, they did a good job. Yeah. Because I think I think it was very like cronenberg It would have been cool for Cronenberg to even make it. I feel like it would have been even worse. But it was like... Yeah, there was some really like worse interesting... worse in a good way. Yes, yeah. Worse in, like, uh, in a way that's triggering to me, but is good for other people. Um, <laughs> which is usual, right? I, yeah, I think it was kind of interesting to see, like, to see this and really understand, like, the broad way, like, the broad topics that he covers. Uh-huh. Because, like, I've read one where there's, like, a guy who's running, and he's, like, maybe a serial killer, but he's not a serial killer. I'm pretty sure that was a Coons book that I read, like, on a train really quick. Cool. um in like nine hours i was like done <laughs> so um but like yeah from that to like strangers where it's aliens to like ones where it's like a dog that is possibly an alien puppy he has a puppy that's an alien there's a lot so <laughs> i i haven't read this one and i don't think i will but i think it was a really good film yeah it was good i was proud of it i'm proud of you dean oh you did good So if you like it, it's dad horror. Because it's number one, the best awesome. Yeah. Shout out to you, Tim. And if you don't like it, it's robot baby because that was gross. Yeah. In like, I want robots to live. I would totally be a part of the railroad in uh, Fallout 4. Yeah. And then also like a synth. And like sympathizer and, and slash Battlestar Galactica. I'd be like, for it, Detroit become human. I let the robots live. Yeah. But Robot Baby is bad in this instance. Yeah. And also, it was like, gross. it was not, it wasn't consensual. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> also, it was not. Yeah. So that it's part a little was different. Also bad. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, in Mass Effect. My character always goes to Garrus because I love him and he's an alien. It's different species. And he's even like, how is this going to work? And I'm like, oh, it's going to work. Thou Star Galactica. (laughs) Exactly. The the humans with the Cylons, they're there. They fall in love. They have babies. It's great. Exactly. Spoilers. (laughs) It's a super old show. Exactly. Um, Just like these books that I spoiled for you. Um, Kat, how do you feel about Dean Koontz? Number one, the best awesome dad. He is coolest number he's, one dad, the best awesome. He's the best pupper dad ever to be. 
He's our dad. He can be our dad. <gasps> Do we put him in the frame that says coolest number one, the best Let's awesome? get a picture of him and someone His here, puppy. someone listener. If you have Photoshop skills, I want you to Photoshop a picture of Dean Coons with his dog, but then we're also there and we're his kids. And that's yes. just like, and then send it to us because I Go really on my want Facebook. That. There are so many child photos of me. Yeah. <laughs> just ask us. We'll I send have you an two. album titled Little Me that I think is from 2009. <laughs> Search for it. Yes. Photoshop the child version of me. Yeah. And with Dean and like dad and dog family. Yeah. And Gabe is and there Gabe too. And Gabe is my sister. Yes. And it's going to be the cutest thing. He has the best dad hair. It's like a, it's. Just the bowl cut that he's had since, like, 70. It's great. I'm sorry you maybe didn't want kids now, but you have <laughs> Too them. bad. You got two kids right here. Dean. We love you, Dad. <laughs> Dad. Dad. <laughs> um, yeah. Even if you were a robot, we'd want you. It's our, I guess our moms would have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, what about for phantoms? I didn't read the book, so I don't know. Yeah. The movie Ooh. was okay. You told me I'm not allowed to like it. <laughs> you can like it. You told me I can't. I didn't tell you that. You told me that. I'm bad at movies. No, we inferred that <laughs> with our study. <laughs> Middle <laughs> school we... me just liked anything that was like superheroes, sci-fi, or like stress. <laughs> it had robots on it. I was like, yes. <laughs> Okay. It had tragedy and then superpowers. I was like, yes. Yes, yeah, so you did say that. You did say that you loved that he was blind and then he became super. I was like, that's super cool. You There's so much that. wrong with me and I could be powerful. What? I will I will give you that. The the I I did enjoy that your the core reason why you liked Daredevil was because of who Daredevil is, which yes. I thought was cute. Yes. So Little I'll give you points was for like, that. There are many medical ailments that I have. Are you telling me right now <laughs> that I could be a superhero? Yeah. Disabilities and all? I was for it. Aw. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, kids. And I can. didn't know there were other kinds. So yeah. all I knew was the one with Ben Affleck. So I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally normal. It's totally fine. Yeah. I would say Phantoms, the book, uh, was really foundational when I was listening, uh, when I was reading when I was younger. Um, it also follows two sisters. And you have the older sister who, like, <laughs> comes and takes care of the younger sister who was acting out in school. And there's yeah. a significant age difference because mm -hmm. one is a doctor. The other one was in high school. Yeah. And that was me and my sister. Like, I mm -hmm. definitely, when I was reading, was like, this is going to be me because I'm going to become a doctor and then I'm going to take care of my sister. It's going to be great. So, Dean, thanks. You wrote about me. You didn't know. <laughs> so we're not doctors. <laughs> you were not. But, but we that do was do an cool asp stuff. aspiration at the time. Yeah. I wanted to be a baby doctor. Oh. Yeah, an obstetrician. Interesting. I could deliver robot babies. You could do it. Um, <laughs> Proteus, <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening. Proteus, listen. Gabe wants a job. I, she has no training. I have zero training. But listen, this the is unprecedented. Is there. there has never been heretofore a robot human baby hybrid. I am ready. I am the to one deliver. who can do it. Um, yeah. I will just say I really, really love Dean Coots. I enjoyed this time. I think it was different because I, I had already known that I loved him. So I wasn't like surprised. Surprised the way I was with king and shirley i didn't know anything about shirley and then i was like oh yo she dope with this i was like dude has always been dad <laughs> dude has always been dad yeah i didn't um, know but now i do <laughs> yes it's just because i can't read because my brain don't work well maybe you can give it a shot and try to read phantoms okay you can have all the time in the world babe um next week we're covering another lady yeah and then we're gonna end out um with a cool guy and then we're on to the next thing. So, <laughs> so if you're enjoying it, uh, make sure that you uh, give us a like on iTunes and give us a little comment. For some reason, it matters, and we would really appreciate it. We love it. Gabe's birthday is November 4th. <laughs> For her birthday. Do you want to tell him my social security number? <laughs> For her birthday, you need to gift us, or her specifically, with a comment on iTunes. Yeah, say happy birthday. I don't think, I don't Even know if that the, the rating is happy birthday five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect. Um, it's not even a rating. It just says happy birthday five stars. I would love one that just says you could deliver my babies. I would feel so motivated. 
<laughs> make your username Proteus. Love it. Oh my it god. Would make my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's dreams. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if you're around that, definitely give us a leg and listen. Um, because we're trying to trying to make it out here. Gabe, what if two we had years, shirts? man. What if we had shirts? Yeah. That was the family portrait. <laughs> And it had the frame that says coolest number, number one, one dad, dad the, the best, best awesome. awesome. And then people bought them. Yeah, that would I listen. I listen, really want this to happen. Listener, it honest honestly, like, if you were interested, please even, email the ghouls at please. the ghouls next door I at gmail.com so and we will send you pictures of us that you can then Photoshop into a picture with our dad, Dean Koontz, and his dogs, and we will be finally you know the happiest Let Greta family. Be in there too. She could be there. We have a whole family now. And it's love and it's wonderful and it's beautiful. If Proteus wants to hop in there, he Yo. could be our stepdad. It's perfect. I, d- I can't imagine a better world. If you want to put Ben Affleck oh in God. there, hanging out with Kat. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> That's also ben perfect. Affleck as Daredevil. As Daredevil. Also Just in like the in a thought bubble above my head. With <laughs> yeah. like, That's a really great concept. Just like with Disabilities a Disabilities and superpowers. Yeah. Nothing about it. us about us. <laughs> just <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I really like just... the idea. Not specifically Ben Affleck, though. That's, uh, that's too much. That's, that's too, too much just to write. Specifying. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> Why? good. Um, yeah, just put me in one of his books because I'm like, I love your writing, Dad. Thanks. Or you know what? Just make me look really scared because of trypophobia. Just have like cracks on the sidewalk. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> how do you draw all these things? We don't know. That's why we need you. Yes. So I am an artist, so I don't know why I can't do it. But you know, no, you guys do. It's more do. important if you guys do it. And it's got to be a Photoshop, not draw. Wow. Yeah. It means more. Yeah, because it's an outside person. <laughs> That's real. I'm just saying my feelings. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, email us ghoulsnextdoor at gmail.com. We would really, really, really love a personalized Photoshop picture of us with our dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, cat. Don't get married. Delete your kids. Dope. Yeah. Or or your kid will grow up to be a full size Tim. <gasps> or robot baby. Or robot baby. Robot baby survives all. Full size Tim. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you say full size tomb? <laughs> full size tomb. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got to. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Tim.